works. So, in order to accurately examine the real seepage phenomenon, site conditions of the ground must be recorded, and but in most cases, su sufficient data may not be readily available. So, numerical analysis, on the other hand, is an effective means of readily and similarly analyzing the physical phenomenon of seepage. So, seepage flow is governed by Darcy's law, which states that the seepage flux passing through the volume of soil in steady state is obtained by the permeability coefficient multiplied by the hydraulic gradient. The webinar will begin shortly. Area. Please remain the on the line. The on the left shows the seepage in a specific time, and one of the finite element formulations is the Gullerkin's approach for the planar elements, which is stated on the right. So, seepage analysis can be largely divided into two, the steady state analysis and the transient state analysis. And seepage module can simultaneously run an analysis defining the steady and transient flows in the analysis case. The analysis results can be used as load input in other modules for coupled analysis and Adding the seepage effects in tunnels and slope stability of levees are a few examples. The webinar will begin shortly. Please remain on Another the line. Another analysis feature of this module is the simulation of flows for both saturated and unsaturated ground. Darcy's law, which is which originated from flow in saturated soil, can be extended to unsaturated domains, and there are two methods to define the unsaturated property. First is directly defining the permeability function and water content function using the pressure head. And the second is defining the relationship between pressure head to volumetric water content to permeability ratio. Both methods can be done in seepage module for easier modeling and allowing the users to express their engineering judgment. The webinar will begin shortly. Please remain on the line. And for program demonstration, we will check the change in groundwater level in event of steady and transient state seepage. This project is a river improvement structure where the left river bank is reinforced by rubble concrete slope in 1 to 0 0.5 and underlain by gravel. The installed steel sheet pile as the retaining structure of the slope protection system may show a valuable change in groundwater level due to lengthening the path of the water flow. And we will use this displayed hydraulic conductivity properties of soil and assume that the steel sheet pile is... The webinar will begin material. shortly. Please remain on the line. So we will now proceed to the program demonstration. So I have prepared here a seepage model where I already defined the ground material properties that we will be using. So in defining a ground material property, you just have to input a name, then enter the horizontal and vertical permeability function, and to account for the unsaturated property, just check this box. Then, the check this button to define a function. So, input a function name. The webinar the will begin type, shortly. Please remain on the line. Defined by using the pressure head to K ratio following the Gardner coefficient which you have to input the A and N parameters. You can also choose for the frontal function uh, formula or the Van Genusten. Accompanied by this is the pressure head to water content function where you can choose either Van Genusten or I use refined. So another powerful thing of seepage module is uh, the function type volumetric water content to pressure head and volumetric water content to permeability coefficient ratio is already the webinar will begin shortly uh, registered please on remain on the line module. so here you just have to select a ground type based on standard JICE soils classification so in case of sand uh, just pick for sand same thing with the TK relationship then click on apply after defining the unsaturated property function it will be it will be a uh, option for selection under this drop down button 
we'll select uh, proper proper function for the select the webinar account. will begin shortly then click please on remain add. on the so line in ssp since we are assuming that is it is an unimpermeable layer just check this box then click on add after defining the, the groundwater properties click close and we will now define the geometry in defining the geometry uh, soil work supports the import function uh, you may have to import a uh, CAD drawing so that defining the geometry will be easier so select the desired uh, drawing file then click on open so we now we now have the webinar the will begin shortly please remain on the line after defining the domains click on the smart surface to register the surfaces of the closed domains after that uh, we have to register all the surfaces with the corresponding ground material property In doing that just select change this selection type to surface then select the surfaces matching the ground material properties so as you can see uh, the expand button will be shown here in the in our works tree once you have uh, selected the surface and registered to our the webinar will begin property. shortly please remain on the line so we will now proceed to uh, assigning the so this assignment corresponds to the borehole that you have click on gravel and for the steel sheet file the webinar will begin shortly please After remain on the line all the surfaces we will now proceed to the model type and to the smart mesh so the smart mesh function of cpage uh, offers you uh, three levels of mesh so the finer the mesh the more exact calculation will be given by the software so click on the very fine mesh and press ok so you, as you can see all the mesh data are, are already registered to the ground material properties after that we the have webinar will begin shortly levels please remain on, on the line so under boundaries and analysis click the nodal head uh, define a boundary set so for example uh, we have to define an OWL condition and a design flood level condition then click close change the boundary set name to OWL and change the value to the respective OWL of your project then change the selection type to curve then select the domains where your water or water level the webinar will begin shortly please remain on the line adjust. then click on apply after that change this to DFL and we will have to define a water level function accounting for the design flood case so in order to account for the transient flow you have to define a seepage function here where the changes in water level must be registered so for example at time zero we are experiencing an OWL condition and at time the webinar will uh, begin shortly please remain on the line for six hours we are expecting that the water level uh, achieves the design flood level which is 23.663 so in in order to uh, simulate 
uh, more steady flow under the design flood level I would like to register a uh, time for uh, six days so changing the time time function here as 518 400 at BFL the webinar level. will begin shortly please remain so on the line simulate a rapid drawdown we are assuming that after a small amount of time for example uh, one hour we can assume that the design flood returns to the OW, OWL condition so by defining a seepage function we can now proceed to the to the transient uh, flow happening in this river so click on add then close the webinar will begin shortly please After remain that, on the line uh, select a curve where the DFL uh, touches the domains in our project then change this function to transient DFL and change the value as a factor of the defined function click on apply then close now you have defined uh, two water levels which is the OWL and the DFL after that the webinar will begin shortly uh, we need to please remain on the line new boundary for us to simulate a flow from the water area to the dry area so input a boundary set for OWL and for DFL click close then change this first to review OWL so this part is the assumption under the C page module so assuming that you have an OWL case where the water level is at this level and the flow that you are that you want to the webinar will begin shortly check please remain on the line seepage flow passing beneath the steel sheet pile and entering a endpoint for the flow under this left side of the river so you have to select a node or curve but for for this project, I want to select a node to have a free, a free selection here. Then click on apply. Then change this to the GDFL. webinar will begin shortly. Please remain and on the line. We will be we will be selecting a new set of nodes since the water level reaches in this level so this riprap or rubble concrete is not an impermeable surface so the water may travel through here and under the steel sheet pile so as a preliminary assumption uh, I am selecting a node where I think that the water level will penetrate The webinar will then begin shortly. Apply. Please remain on the line. After that, click close. So, since water may also travel from this part to the left side of our generated model data, you have to input an infinite boundary to simulate a flow on the left side. So, you have to input an infinite left. Then, click close. After that, change the boundary set to infinite left and change the selection type to curve. So, this area might be subjected to flow since the water may travel from here. The webinar will begin shortly. Left side. Please remain on the line. Then click on apply and close. 
So after defining a nodal head and review boundaries, we have now to define a analysis case. So analysis case offers a steady state analysis and transient state analysis here in C page. So input a name for steady state steady under OWL condition. Then use all mesh sets and pick a boundary set under OWL cases. In selecting a boundary, the webinar will begin shortly. Please remain on the line. Click on the desired boundary, then drag to the right. right. Then click on apply. Then we will now define a function for a transient flow under DFL conditions. So change the analysis method to transient state analysis. Same mesh sets will be registered but different boundary set. So select the DFL boundary sets. Then check for the analysis control data. So here the webinar uh, will begin shortly. Please remain on the line to check for the time that you want to view on the result area. So click on save result. Click on auto generation and so the whole period is 5187.60 seconds and I will I'd like to add uh, four steps and create it then you can edit it uh, the webinar will begin shortly please remain on the line the DFL case or the defined the uh, C page function earlier to check for the time that you want to verify then click on ok after defining two analysis cases click close and we will now run the analysis run the analysis and perform analysis since all the elements are converging the webinar will begin shortly to the please remain step. on the line so you have to manipulate this area in order to check for the results so for example I'd like to check for the pore pressure under the steady state OWL case and the steady state C page analysis so this this graph corresponds to this legend by changing this to transient DFL uh, another options here where the time steps that you created can be visible the so webinar will begin shortly please remain on the line phreatic line and as you may observe uh, the changes in phreatic line corresponds to the changes of water level so to simulate a flow path click on flow path and point your cursor under this and change the analysis case corresponding to the system that you want to view so as you can see uh, the defined review DFL and the infinite review DFL the webinar will begin shortly please remain on the line the two endpoints for the flow lines are the review DFL or the infinite boundary DFL so these results can be saved as image to do a, rep a report and you can also use this data to incorporate it in a slope stability calculation of this slope project so just 
save this file and click close we will now proceed to the slope module so slope module the is webinar a will begin shortly please remain on the line stability analysis program using limit equilibrium method and strength reduction method through finite element analysis it can be used for all types of soil and rock slopes embankments and earth dams retaining walls etc it also includes probability and sensitivity analysis and multi-scenario modeling and support design so slope reinforcement such as nail and anchor steel sheet pile concrete driven pile and geogrid can be modeled and analyzed in slope module the soil mechanics definition of safety factor is the ratio of the available shear strength to the minimum shear strength the webinar will begin EQ. shortly please remain on the line provide both srm and lem so engineers can choose the method based on their engineering judgment for this session we will focus in limit equilibrium method to calculate a stability factor in lem slope failure is the sliding of a wedge of soil in a predefined slip surface the formulation is based on principles of limiting equilibrium that satisfies statics wherein the summation of moments, horizontal forces, and vertical forces must be equal to zero. And the important assumptions are the wedge of soil considering in a slip surface The webinar is will begin shortly. Slices. Please remain on the line. The factor of safety is a constant along the slip surface. Therefore, each slice has the same factor of safety factor of safety is defined as the factor by which the soil strength must be reduced so that the potential sliding mass is a point of limiting equilibrium so various solution techniques for the method of slices have been developed and are in common use the primary differences among all these methods lies in which equations of statics are considered and satisfied which interslice normal and shear force are included and the assumed relationship between the interslice forces so this table the webinar will begin shortly please remain on the line methods. aside from the equilibrium cases an important assumption for each method is used in the analysis so in simplified b shaft the software uses the interslice forces on both sides must be equal and for simplified yanbu no interslice is acting on the slice Spencer considers that the ratio of interslice forces can be expressed as the tangent of an angle formed by normal and interslice forces. While Mor Morgan Stern and Price defined it as a function and the angle form is the webinar constant. will begin shortly. Additional Please remain on the line. Parameters will be used to define the interslice and normal force relationship in using Sarma. Excuse me. So here you can see the pros and cons of each method in this table. So Bishop's method is most widely used for slope stability analysis and is well suited for glaze. As cohesive materials often go through rotational failure of mass volume about, uh, about a point of rotation. For more complex problems involving highly heterogeneous ground with different material between adjacent layers and where the interslice shear force is expected to vary you can either the webinar use will begin shortly Spencer please or remain Morgan on the Stone line price method price method however requires good knowledge in slope stability to select or define better functions for med modeling uh, interslice shear forces so shown here is an example of limit equilibrium method formulation based on two factor of safety equations one, equi one equation gives the factor of safety with respect to moment equilibrium, which is F sub M, while the other equation gives the factor of safety with respect to horizontal force equilibrium. The idea of using two factor of safety equations was first published by Spencer in 1967. The webinar will begin Entering shortly. The normal Please force remain on the line. The, uh, force equilibrium equation and moment equilibrium equation the full equilibrium will be iteratively calculated until it finds a value that makes two safety factors equal so soil works does that iteration in each predefined failure surface 
saving us more time to focus in looking for more economical way of reinforcing the slope. So for program demonstration, we will check the stability of this river revetment and it is a riprap underlain by gravel with a slope of 1 to 1 and gabions are used as The webinar will begin shortly. Please remain on the line. The ordinary water level. So this ground type with corresponding more column properties of the soil will be used in the analysis. Stability of gabions and riprap will be calculated with these properties and design lane load will be applied at the road area for both events of design flood level and ordinary water level. So we will now proceed to a slope uh, demonstration. So for a slope demo, uh, the webinar will begin shortly. Please remain on the line. Then select the slope module and check for the initial parameters. If this is okay to you, click on OK, then proceed. So here in SoilWorks, uh, we can import a CAD file to define our geometry. So after defining the geometry, next is defining the ground material properties under the LEM tab. So click on ground material property. The webinar will begin and shortly. Earlier, Please remain on the line. Uh, I registered the borehole data to, the, to our database. So you can access the database and select for the borehole. And just select all and change the model type to more column LEM click on assign then uh, you will observe that the uh, define that the ground water properties are already defined by using the database then click close and we have to register this ground water the properties webinar will begin shortly please remain on the line data. so click the geometry tab click on smart surface then register the so register the surfaces uh, corresponding to the uh, borehole data that you have silty sand sand silty sand sand then gravel and silty sand. The webinar will begin shortly. Please remain on the line. Gravel and sand. So after defining the surfaces and assigning the ground metal properties, So after assigning the the webinar um, will begin shortly. Please remain on the line. Data, we'll now proceed to LEM tab and define a line load. So click for this icon and define a load set for line load and for static seismic. After that, click close. Then change the load set first to lane load so change the load type to distributed load to apply for the uh, lane load then change the direction to global the webinar direction. will begin shortly please remain on the line click on apply 
and as you can see the lane load is already applied click close and we are here in slope module you can define a static seismic load in form of a static seismic factor so here you can apply a factor for the for the analysis or for the seismic load for example a 0.25 seismic factor under the x x direction or z direction but for today uh, we, we would like to add the webinar will begin shortly please remain on the line the load set to static seismic and click on ok after defining the loads uh, we now have to define an fa a failure surface by doing an arc failure or a polygonal or leave the auto search to the software so for better engineering judgment I would like to do an arc failure surface in this area where there is a interface between the riprap and the gabions and I would like the to webinar also will check begin shortly the, please remain uh, on the line slip on this whole wedge of the soil so in order to do that click on the arc failure surface uh, define a boundary set for example uh, lem local and lem global failure click close then change the boundary set to local first then uh, I prefer to draw an arc tangent first before drawing a grid range in order to draw to draw an arc tangent uh, the first two points are the the webinar will begin shortly please remain on the line then to do a series of tangent line uh, you can click the third point from down or up so you can uh, define number uh, the, you can add number of arcs to define a tangent and then draw a grid range so this grid so this grid will be the set of points or or center points that will be a uh, tangent to these lines then to the webinar that, will begin shortly apply, please remain on the, the line the reset to lem global same thing draw an arc tangent first and i would like to change the boundary set to global then draw an arc tangent so since I would like to check for the global failure or global slip surface here uh, I the webinar will begin shortly please remain the on the line, line would cross the whole whole wedge of the soil and this then click on apply first then close so the relationship of this grade grid range and tangent line is the defined arc surface failure of this center point to this tangent line after defining a slip surface We can now go to uh, analysis case then define an analysis the case. webinar will begin shortly please add. remain on the line so first we'd like to define a local failure at OWL condition so name this as LEM local OWL the analysis method as LEM then use all layer sets and for the boundary set choose the LEM local and for load set just click on use all load sets to 
define the analysis method for LEM, click on the analysis control data and change the analysis method to Spencer. Check the slope direction. The webinar will begin shortly. Please remain on the line. 16.2 for the OWL. Then click on OK and apply. So, next thing is uh, to account for the local failure at the FL condition. Change the name to LEM local DFL. Same, same layer sets and same boundary set and same load set but different water level. So, change this to 19.2 which is the DFL. Click OK. Then the webinar will begin apply. shortly. Please remain on the line. After that, we would like to check uh, LEM global uh, failure under the OWL under the DFL case. So just change the boundary set to global, and if you will check the control data, uh, same analysis method is used, same water level since it is DFL. Then click on apply. Then change this to OWL and change the water level to OWL. Okay. The webinar will begin shortly. Please remain then on the line. On apply and close. After defining the uh, analysis case, another fu another function of the soil works is to uh, check for the uh, input if, if if we are good to go and good to run the software so check for the under the tools tab click check and a brief technical review will be shown so here uh, we have a red mark here since we don't have uh, any structural property in our model so we don't the webinar define, will begin we shortly please remain stage, on the line we are still good to go and analysis can now be performed go back to model data then under the analysis and design define a design case where the uh, where the safety factor will be set as safe if it it if it exceeds the 1.3 safety factor that we have stated in this design tab click on ok and run the report run the analysis the webinar will begin shortly please remain on the line So after that, you can see that the all the analysis case are run and click close to check for the results. Oh, to check for the results, go to the results tab and under the results work tree, expand the uh, certain analysis and click check for the uh, safety factor on the defined analysis case. The webinar will begin shortly. Please remain on the line. So you can check that the each slice is solved using the Spencer method where the category for Spencer is displayed. And you can check that the horizontal seismic force is also uh, incorporated in checking for the safety factor. To simulate the desired water level on this ground, what on this ground, you may incorporate the uh, seepage module to simulate uh, the webinar will begin shortly. On this Please remain on the line. Area. Since since uh, stating a water level on the analysis gives us a straight water level at the given water height. 
after that click close the soft ground module soft ground usually pertains to clay but there are literatures which considers other soil types to be a weak layer depending on the end value from the standard penetration test consolidation properties of the soft ground loading and duration of construction can be modeled in this module the so webinar will begin shortly please remain on the spray. line Consolidation analysis is largely classified into theoretical one-dimensional consolidation analysis method and the finite element method. Uh, 1D consolidation analysis enables the user to readily obtain the results through a simple process following the Terzaghi's jury. While in FEM, SoilWorks assumes that the interpolation of function of pore water pressure is identical to that of displacement. And other parametric analysis such as preliminary analysis for checking the analysis trend of the foundation, drainage spacing, and the webinar will begin shortly. Be Please remain on the line. Ground. All soil improvement methods disturb the ground, affecting the coefficient of consolidation. This ground penetration causes the smear effects, which may result to the delay of consolidation. So, soft ground also accounts for the smear effects in the consolidation. Soil works can also model some of the soil improvement methods such as sand drain method, paper drain or cylindrical drain method, pack drain method, sand compaction pile or gravel compaction pile method. FEM results shows that the actual ground behavior to the mesh and display the deformed shape. The webinar of the will begin model. shortly. While Please remain on the line. Results can be viewed in intuitive graphs of change in soil strength due to inso installed soil improvement. Graphs for preliminary and residual settlement can be checked in the control points placed vertically on the model. So, using soft ground module, you will check the elastic and consolidation settlements of this earth dam foundation. This massive structure with a base of more than 200 meters and a fill height of 48 meters has a clay core and combinations of sand and gravel filters for seepage control. So assuming that each stage of, each stage of embankment is thoroughly compacted, no consolidation the webinar will, will begin be shortly. The clay Please core remain and on the line. will only occur in the foundation. With that, we can devise a scheme where the additional height of dam is considered uh, as per instruction of the DGCS 5.3.2.7 allowance of settlement. Allowance for settlement. It is either an extra embankment, parapet walls, or any scheme to account for the settlement. So we will use these borehole lugs with the corresponding more column properties of the soil and additional data for clays will be inputted on the program demo. After construction, the reservoir will return will retain a uh, 45 point The webinar will begin shortly. Please remain on the line. And 30 meter high in normal operating condition. So using 1D consolidation in software module, we will assign the earth the material as an embankment model type. So we will now proceed to the program demonstration. So first, open soil works. Then select the soft ground. So check for the initial parameters. Then the webinar okay. will begin shortly. Please remain on so the first line. Is we will import a geometry through CAD file. So change this to DXF. Then select the geometry. And as you can see, we have now defined our geometry through a CAD file. After that, go to 1D consolidation and select for the ground material property to define the ground material properties on our project. So here in soft ground, uh, you can choose a model type uh, to simulate the behavior of the ground material property where you can choose either embankment, sand, 
uh, clay, modified The webinar clay, will begin shortly. Brown, Please remain on the line. Elastoplastic and elastoviscoplastic. So it is your uh, engineering judgment where you have to choose a uh, model type to your project or for the specific ground that you will use in your project. So first assumption of this modeling is the whole earth dam structure must not settle because we are assuming that uh, uh, this structure undergone a proper staging of embankment and proper compaction has been done so uh, the webinar will begin shortly please remain on the line the assumption is uh, no settlement will happen in the whole earth dam structure and the whole settlement that we are going to check is for the uh, earth dam foundation only so with that assumption we will be choosing an embankment model type for the whole earth dam structure regardless of its uh, soil type with, even though it has a clay core or sand gravel or riprap will uh, all of those materials will be registered as a embankment model type and since i already uh, the webinar the will begin shortly please remain on, on the line database for whole data on our database so we'll access the database then select for the borehole then first we'll choose the uh, earth the materials then set it as embankment model type then click assign after that you can see that even though it is a sand it is considered as embankment model type <coughs> as well as having the clay core after defining the dam properties both our database so the webinar will begin board. shortly please remain on the line and for this we'll select first the granular materials on our foundation which is silty sand sand and gravel we'll register it as sand to exhibit a non-consolidating material then click on assign so another thing since uh, on our borehole we have two layers of sand with different end values which uh, classify which can help us to classify if it is a uh, soft ground I would like to add another another sand layer by going to the webinar will begin shortly please remain on the line Click the sand layer and register it again as sand model type Click assign then I will rename it as sand 2 modify after that we'll go to database again and Mod, uh, select uh, the clay layer and model it uh, and assign a model type as clay click on assign so after doing that we will now check for the uh, end values of our uh, foundation so first for the silty sand since it is ranging from 3 onwards I the will webinar will begin shortly value. please remain on the it's line the calculation method as bkho then click on modify same thing as sand I will use uh, SPT n value of 15 and click on modify so for gravel since it has a uh, n value of 58 onwards I will use 58 then for sand 2 uh, let's just say that it is 50 then wikiho and then modify so for clay uh, additional parameters must have to be uh, entered so for the end value the webinar will begin shortly please remain on the line CC method you can use either CC or change in E or MV but the most widely used is the CC method so input the CC compression index and uh, expansion index here 
So you can also specify a product consolidation pressure based on your geotechnical report, but leave it as it is. And over consolidation uh, ratio will can be also uh, inputted here in the additional parameters. So for the draining condition. I will use uh, the webinar will begin shortly. Please the remain on the line. Sandwich in uh, sand layers where clay can either uh, exhibit a consolidation uh, in the above layer or the bottom layer. After that, uh, set the strength increase ratio to one since we have we don't have any. Since we don't we don't have any uh, soil improvement uh, works in our model. After that, click on modify, then close. So to register the, the webinar will right, begin shortly. Please remain on the line. Uh, model, click first for the geometry tab and select smart surface. Then assign the corresponding. Uh, surfaces assign the corresponding surfaces to the model so uh, let me change the selection mode to surface so that I can choose it freely The webinar will begin shortly. Please remain on the line. So we'll now assigning uh, ground material properties on our foundation. So let me check first. So let me check first. Uh, silty sand, clay sand, and gravel. Please. The webinar will begin shortly. Please remain on the line. After assigning the ground material properties, we'll now go to 1D consolidation tab and uh, input a lane load. Set the name as lane load, then click close. Change the load set to lane load, uh, strip load, set the load type as strip load. Then change this to the webinar will begin shortly. Please remain on the line. The load then select a curve. So I will send uh, another lane load for the other side or other half. Because the strip loading is only limited to uh, one curve at a time. After that, select a curve. The webinar will begin shortly. Apply. Please remain on the line. Click close. After defining the loads, we'll now proceed to the defining the settlement calculation position. So here is you have to manually input the distance increment of the uh, consolidation or the area where the settlement will be calculated. The webinar will begin shortly. Please remain on the line. Center of your center of the dam 
regard uh, with reference to the origin so the, i want to input a distance increment of 130 then change the calculation positions to two and create calculation positions after that click ok so after doing that go to model tab and loads and boundaries to input the self weight the webinar will begin shortly please remain on the line and input a support system at the bottom so to define a support click this icon uh, name it as support close change the boundary set to support the selection type to curve then select the, the bottom line since <coughs> excuse me since all the gravel parameters of our foundation doesn't exhibit a soft ground criteria we, we are free to select the bottom part as a and the, for, and, uh, the webinar will begin shortly. Please so remain on the line. To select the bottom part. <coughs> so we may set the bottom part as uh, no deformation at X and Z and no rotation at Y. After that, click on apply and close. So the support system is now confirmed at the bottom then check for the analysis and design and set the analysis case click on add to define a settlement check settlement check using 1d the webinar will begin shortly please Based remain on the line method to 1d consolidation and select all the layers use all the boundary set since it is only the support boundary then use also the load sets then to check for the analysis control data uh, leave it as it is since we don't have a construction stage or construction method in our model then change the conditions for judging the soft ground so for clay soil uh, if we want to uh, calculate for the consolidation of the the webinar will begin shortly clay please remain on the line of the clay in our model except for the clay core all of the clay on our model you can either uh, input a high, higher number of SPTN value count for example 45 or 50 to account all the clay layers regardless of the uh, end values of the clay while in sand you can do the same but other literatures can say that at SPTN value of at SPTN value of 30 or below that is that can be considered as a weak layer after that set the, the webinar will begin shortly please remain on the line borehole, which is 15.85 then click OK so after defining all of that click on apply and close so to check if we are okay to perform an analysis go to tools then click select the check so a quick technical review will be displayed since you don't have drain property uh, that have installed in our model same as the uh, structural property and we don't have any construction stage it, we the webinar will begin shortly please remain on the line perform an analysis go again to the model data and select analysis and design and perform analysis so set this as uh, soft ground then the analysis is finished and completed click on close go to results tab manipulate this area or 
work around these results work results three so at calculation position of 130 we can check for that the webinar will begin shortly please remain on the line for degree of consolidation so you can also use the bottom area to select for the <coughs> and to check for the settlement of our foundation so as you can see here under the consolidation settlement table only the clay layer exhibits a secondary consolidation and the primary consolidation for clay is also stated while the immediate settlement for the sand characterized uh, soft ground since it has a lower end value than 30 as we have set on our analysis the webinar will begin we shortly please remain on the line the settlement or the immediate settlement for that layer so with this information you can decide either you have to add an additional embankment to the dam or since the since the design flood level is around 44, 45 and the total height of your dam is 48 with a 3 meter allowance you can say that the whole dam or considering the settlement can still uh, accompany the design flood level so the webinar will begin shortly table. please remain on the okay. line soft ground presentation and if you have any more questions you may email us at pageinquiry at midasit.com or philippines at midasit.com or check our FB page which is Midas IT Philippines. So that would be all and thank you. The webinar will begin shortly. Please remain on the line. The webinar will begin shortly. Please remain on the line. The webinar will begin shortly. Please remain on the line.